Hey guys, Dustin Dolby here. I was just having a bit of fun in the studio, a bit too much fun, and I thought I'd share this workflow with you. It's how to photograph wine using plexiglass uh, as your shooting surface. And we're gonna get this big, beautiful, buttery render out of this. And it's just like our classic wine with speed lights episode I just, just did a week ago. The link's in the description. But we're gonna use some really interesting techniques here to cut out our item. So I have the classic wine lighting scenario set up here, and you've seen this before. And I mean, what can we say about this at this point? I'm getting pretty deep into the wine photography like I told you. We have the gradient on the left, the reflector on the right. Everything's maybe a bit underexposed, but it looks classic. And we have that nice grape garnish. So I'm gonna turn on the second speed light. And I'm just using these cheap Yongnuo speed light guys. They're great. If you don't need TTL, uh, they're one of my favorite items. And just at 132nd power, I'll just inject a lot of detail into the label. We're going to suffer a bit of a weird specular highlight happening up here, but on purpose I've positioned it in a non-obtrusive place. So by using the frame before, we can mask that out easily, and really just use a combination of these two frames to get a gorgeous wine shot out of this. So at this point, I will turn off my second speed light. And let's get a selection frame. Did you guys catch my episode last week, how to photograph bold wine? I use this technique where I bring the strip box in the back to get a perfect selection. Well, that technique is just augmented by the plexiglass. And boy, that's a little too bright. So let's talk about this. We basically have a 360 degree perfect selection around our item. Even though it's overexposed, it's kind of floating in white, kind of almost looks like a cheesy catalog look. But now I can just cycle through power. So I put that flash on an eighth power and I'll probably end up doing a 16th and a 32nd power. And then I'll end up with a kind of catalog of images that I can use to mass together to create an all encompassing selection frame. And that's gonna unlock and unleash so much power in the editing room. So these three exposures, that looks great. Now, let me take this one because it looks good. And once I boomify this, and Frono's photo throws the word boomify around, what do I mean by that, really? I mean, I'm just going to crank the blacks down, the whites up, the shadows up, the shadows down, rather, the highlights up. Just make it maximum contrast, maybe even crank the clarify if I'm feeling crazy. You'll get this. It's a selection frame, and we can select these outer parts, paste the color in there, and then just invert this whole thing. And there's your mask. And so we can bring up this exposure. And once we combine it with this previous exposure uh, to get rid of the ugly specular, we're going to look at something like this, which is a beautiful frame. And once we apply that layer mask we just created, uh, the world's ours at this point. It's basically a blank canvas through which we can put this on black, white, and we have a whole raft of options. Now check out my video, How to Photograph Simple Items to Look Dramatic, where I teach you how to really clean up the edges of selections like this and make them look beautiful. But for educational purposes, I mean, these two items are going to be an absolute powerhouse. Now, I appreciate when you guys leave me comments. And one comment you've been leaving me is you want to see some B-roll. Well, here's some B-roll. Why don't I unpack this lighting setup a step further for you? So here is the strip box looking at the diffuser at a 45 degree angle. And this is how I create that classic gradient we see in the exposures before us. So sometimes even when the exposure goes off, I'll actually pull... Uh, the material taut against the strip box and that'll make sure that on my exposure let me zoom in I'm just enjoying a really nice hard edge down the left hand side the more distance between your strip box edge and your diffuser the more feathered that edge will appear so let me just fire off an exposure to see if I put that strip box back in a smart spot it's looking a little too bright what do you guys think and by bright I mean way too dark I'm actually putting my speed layer one over one power which is something i often do because the diffuser eats up a bit of the energy right and maybe that doesn't look as nice as it did before but just so i can break down this setup that image looks nice now you see i bring in a reflector i always do this and the key is to have the reflector nice and snug against that shooting surface because that creates a real vortex of reflection coming back at your wine model and really lets the light envelop the whole side of the specular highlight Notice how eventually our specular highlight does get cut off down here at the side, but that is caused naturally by the shape of the grapes. And you know, I enjoy that because it looks organic. 
You could remove the grapes out of the shot and take another exposure if you wanted to really get every little bit of that specular, you could. But I don't mind that the grapes cut it off. Like I said, it's sort of natural. So why not I just take out the reflector completely? I'm a big fan of Carl Taylor. He's a photographer on YouTube and he often takes items out of his lighting setup. And I feel like that gives you a really good idea of you know what's happening. I enjoy that. So there's a simple before and after. And we see just how powerful that is in bringing in some additional information. Now, I'm not gonna move um, my diffuser because it takes a while. And guys, that diffuser is just a cheap one off Amazon. It's like a foldable $50 one. It's not the thickest diffusion material, but it does the trick. But let me show you just hitting um, my item with a bare strip box, the difference. And it's interesting. I like these looks too, and it's kind of a bold, edgy look. But um, the classic look, I don't know. So something can be said for both. What do you guys like? I don't know. Leave me a comment below. Do you like the harsh, light looks, or do you enjoy the gradated looks more? Within the context of having a grape garnish from the dollar store, I, I really like this classical lighting. It really lifts up the production value. So guys, why don't I meet you inside a camera raw and we'll go ahead and unlock the potential from that selection frame. I'll meet you there. So while I'm trying to craft a beautiful selection frame, there's a few tricks I employ and I'd love to share them with you. I turn the contrast up to 100, the whites up, uh, the highlights rather, but the whites as well, uh, the shadows down. You see where I'm going. I'm just cranking all the dark stuff dark and all the bright stuff bright and squeezing all the dynamic range I can out of this image like a lemon. Now, if I hold Alt and click my white point, you'll see my wine bottle surrounded in a lot of white, but it's not perfect. I'm actually suffering a pretty serious problem around the shoulder here. Here's a tip. Keep your strip box further back away from your wine bottle and you won't run into these issues. But if I turn my exposure all the way down, clearly this stuff isn't surrounded in white, but the top of my wine bottle is, and that's really powerful because by turning the exposure down, I got rid of any unwanted highlights. So I'd import this file and call it um, top of the wine bottle. So we're going to craft a perfect suction frame out of multiple exposure levels. So that's the top of the wine bottle. And then conversely, let me turn up the exposure and we'll see slowly the reflection start to disintegrate away. And up here in the really uh, radically exposed part, we'll see if we hold alt we have the selection down at the bottom near the grapes. And that's really tricky to do. You have to overexpose it. But thank goodness for raw. Now, I use camera raw, but you can do this in Lightroom or you know any program you have that can handle raw data and raw files. So I'll import this and call it maybe grape selection. And then we're going to find some middle ground uh, somewhere around here and hold alt. And we'll see we have uh, you know around the mid-range of the bottle all that stuff selected. So it's really a uh, harmony between the three exposures. That'll give you a beautiful three exposure perfect selection. Now I've already brought in those frames and they're sitting right here. So why don't I start with the upper bottle, bring up my lasso tool and make sure you're using polygonal lasso, lasso tool. It's a really powerful tool. And I'll just make a little selection where I'm confident my wand bottle surrounded in white. And I'll give that a layer mask. So here's our selection so far. It's perfect but it's only half a selection. So we'll bring out the middle. And a problem we have with the middle is we do have a specular highlight showing up here because the strip box is too close, but we have a bit of edge information that's holding on for dear life. So again, with the lasso tool, first I'll notice how far my top goes down just so I know what I need. I'll overlap it a bit. and I'm going to select this downward, but I'm not going to select to the right of the information. I'm going to want to make sure I stay to the left of it. And that's so the edge is determining itself, really. I'm just getting rid of any unwanted, erroneous light that has made its way onto our wine bottle. And at the end, we'll use curves to really solidify the selection. But you have to get rid of anything that's egregiously going to get in your way like this. Uh, perfect. So I'll hit Alt-Delete to paste black in there. And I'm bringing up my top exposure. And we'll see it's a pixel off. Whoopsie. So maybe I want to move that over a hair or reduce this by a hair. But um, we'll just move along. You're obviously going to take your time to make sure things are perfect. But just so you get the idea of the general workflow, let's bring our bottom exposure up here to the top. And I've desaturated this because really with layer masks, you're just speaking informationally about information from zero black to 100 white. 
in terms of opacity. You don't need color or anything like that. And what I'll do with this is kind of unique. I'll give it a layer mask. I'll invert it. I'll hit B to bring up my brush. And I'll just paint it in. And it's so nice. It's spreading so smooth. It's like putting uh, jam on toast or something like that. But it's really beautiful. And it's really fun. You know, no one's having fun with the pen tool. I'll tell you that. Except Aaron Nace. I'm a big fan of Aaron Nace, I gotta say. Um, now, we'll see a negative consequence of doing this here. If I brushed into here, we'll see it degraded the quality of our selection. So I'd want to bring up black and mask that from showing up here. Oh, but then you see there's a bit of push and pull. We get the selection showing up here, and we'll find a happy medium. But if you take your time to do this uh, correctly, um, this is a really powerful, powerful workflow. So now I'll bring out a black brush, and I can touch up any little thing that may be astray, like these lines. And, you know, I purposefully chose an episode with a garnish, because look how much harder this is than just a wine bottle. But basically, once you've fixed up a little maybe pixel selection here, that's almost a perfect selection. So a new layer, and we'll bring out the lasso. Super crude. And, you know, kind of like a cooking show, I already have a perfect selection made. It's waiting in the oven. But if I invert this, bring white as my foreground, paste white. There you have it. There's your layer mask. How beautiful is that, guys? Leave me a comment if you love that. The reason I ask you guys to comment so much is because it helps me rank higher in searches. Like, if you search how to photograph wine, I'm one of the top rankers, and I'm so proud. And it's because you guys comment, so thank you so much. It's also to do with watch time, so like watch my episodes all day, every day, you know what I mean? But, okay, enough self-promotion. Let's, let's get on to the workflow. So here's the perfect mask. It's cooked up beautifully. And here's our wine bottle with the specular highlights removed with that original frame. And what I'll simply do is, are you guys ready? Because I'm going to throw some hotkeys at you. I'm going to bring out my layer mask, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, Control D to deselect, visible my wine bottle copy, give it a group and control G, give it a layer mask, hold alt and click my layer mask, control V to paste our mask from earlier, alt click to escape the wine layer mask view, and then control D, I lost my own train of thought there. But you know, watch that at 25% speed, and you have a perfect selection made, and that's just beautiful. Let's bring in black as our background color. And what a nice selection, now this is way too bright, you can see, you know, the studio in here, so I'd obviously put a curves layer and probably make things a bit more moody. Maybe somewhere around there. Looks too dark, doesn't it? Well, I can hit B and do something interesting here, which is I can put a low opacity on my brush, bring in black as my brush, and then I can just, you know, sort of uh, pepper a bit of light back into these grapes so they're looking nice and juicy. You know, before someone comments it, I know we have a sort of red grape here, but it's more of the black species of red grape. And these are more the classical dollar store red grape. And, you know, we could color these like that. Do you want me to do? I wasn't going to do much editing, but I don't mind it really. Anything for the fam. Um, let's select a color from our wine bottle. And we're going to get the color of those grapes. So I'll bring a new layer over my wine frame and I'll paste it. And the reason it looks kind of funky is because of that curves adjustment, but don't worry. We're going to put this on color mode. And that looks super cheesy, but what we'll do is add a layer mask and invert it. Oh, there's that Windows 7 horn honking at me. And we'll hit B. Oh, there it is again. I really don't like the sounds that come with Windows 7, i got to say. Um, where was I? Yeah. Oh, it's honking up a storm. It won't let me use a brush. Why is that? Is it because I'm not on a layer? There we go. So now I can get on my layer mask, and I don't want to have a low opacity. I want to have a full opacity. But then I can brush in color, and that looks ridiculous. But at a low opacity, we're just starting to make these more like purple grapes, which is kind of interesting. And, you know, take your time and select these perfectly because you don't want to make uh, the leaves turn weird colors. But that's interesting. You can uh, you can really use a lot of props and get pretty creative with the coloring in post-production. So, like I said, I wasn't really planning on editing this, but I love my family here at Workflow, so maybe I will do a quick little edit. 
Um, I love selective color. You go to your white channel and turn all the values down, and it makes your labels pop. And you guys may have seen me do this before. And you can even duplicate it and get pretty creative. I'll invert the mask on this one so it's really disappeared, but then I'll paint it on my brand elements to make the brand really pop. I want to make sure that Shiraz pops extra. And that already looks pretty nice. Now, one interesting thing I noticed is, you know, we have decent specular highlights, but they could use a bit of enhancing. What do I mean by that? I mean, because I use such a thin diffusion material, I sometimes suffer from a harsh specular edge like you see there, and then it blurs into information. Well, what you could do is duplicate your wine layer and perform a Gaussian blur on it and invert a mask, and then paint a bit of Gaussian blurred um, specular highlight into there to make more of a smooth transition. Now, in order to do that, I probably want to select my labels out and do a whole myriad of other editing techniques to make that really nice. So I'll skip that for today. So guys, why do I like selecting on plexiglass? Well, it's because it does all the work for you. And now we're existing completely behind our object. And that is an unprecedented level of power that no one man should have. Because now I can make a gradient behind my object. And we start to get nice little studio looks like that. Why don't I actually sample a color directly from my label? And I find colors look best when they're rich. Actually, do you want, I'll go for more of a... What would you call this, this color? Elderberry? Was that overly specific? Leave me a comment so I can rank better and let me know what color you'd call this. It's actually almost a wine color, ironically. Let's try doing something with this. And I'll make a little gradient. And that looks nice just like that. So that shows you the power of selecting things out. Now, once again, we're going to have a bit ending issue, which is where you see colors turn from one to another. Actually, I want to do a little test, and maybe you guys could let me know what the answer is. When I desaturate this, do you see the coloring, the banding rather, get more extreme or less extreme? Like, how's the gradation of light? That looks relatively smooth for my eyes. Probably looks like garbage on YouTube. But the black and white looks really bad. Does that mean black and white has less color depth? I'm really interested in knowing that. So why don't you run me through your workflow of 256-bit color depth and let me know what is the banding solution here? Does this look worse or does this look worse in terms of color depth? I'd really like to know. So here's a final render I threw together here. And boy, I love this. It's just so smooth. Um... When I imported my selection frame, I actually held my alt point such that I left the reflection in. And you see that I use that to my advantage here. Now, normally you don't want a plexiglass reflection. It's of poor quality because you get a double reflection from the upper and lower surface of the clear glass. It's kind of like you're wearing your grandpa's glasses. You're seeing two of everything. Um, so normally you don't want that, but at least it's some information to bring into Photoshop. You can blur it. I blended it in so subtly here that no one's going to really zoom in and not like it. If you tried to flip all your rendered information upside down to create a digital reflection, you'd have a really rough time with that grape, which is why I brought in the grapes to show you how we can deal with intricate information uh, with such ease using this interesting plexiglass technique. So guys, please thumb up my video. It's a beautiful way to help my channel. And I have a lot of product photography tutorials on the way. So make sure to stay tuned. Uh, let me name a few just for instance. I'm going to do um, some more cosmetic photography. I'm going to do perfumes, beauty products, and I'm going to even do jewelry. So if any of that stuff excites you, you're in for a really good time here at Workflow. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a beautiful day.